Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to episode three of the Cosmic Barbecue, a podcast about everything and anything by the members of Dinosaur Pile Up, me, Matt in the Real World, Michael J. Shields, and Jim Dammit. I'm using our, I'm using our Instagram names today. I might just keep on doing that because I don't know. It feels nice right. Touch. Yeah, why not? I could use the followers. How you know? are you, dudes? Yeah, <laughs> yeah good. I'm ready to talk about en- Enver thing and en- anything. <laughs> Enver thing. <laughs> Cheers, Mike. Appreciate that. Appreciate the support. <laughs> Matt. Matt's fifth attempt that you'll probably hear uh, in the final edit of this podcast is saying en- Enver yeah, thing yeah. and everything. <laughs> um mikey don't you you've got a game or something for us today right well that's what you, uh yeah you yeah to. just just a little kind of kind of a game little kind of thing um band related uh because we've supported a lot of bands in our career thus far even some while uh, i and jim weren't in the band and they're included in this game so, oh my god, dude! Between between you and Jim, it's, mem- it's a memory game, which I know you absolutely oh, love. Brilliant, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, I do love a game, though. If there's one thing, if there is one takeaway from this, it is that I love a game. <laughs> so, I'm, I'm um, and also your memory is, you know, on point. <laughs> it's second to none, Mike. It is second to none. So yeah, this is it. on my shoulders, right? Okay, let's go. Uh, oh well, I'll just <laughs> never forget. I'll never forget, Matt, um, I don't even know if this is memory or you were just, something was going on with you that day, but playing in Liverpool and uh, we were, we were going to go into um, Mona Lisa and you started playing yeah. Birds and Planes and then yeah. you were like, oh shit, sorry, what am I doing? Oh yeah, of course, yeah, Birds and Pl- uh, Mona Lisa and you started playing Birds and Planes again, you're like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> God, sorry guys, I keep playing the wrong song. Anyway, here's Mona Lisa, and then you did Birds and Planes again. <laughs> After the what? third time, it was like this isn't even funny. This is worrying. <laughs> yeah, there, and there was like there wasn't many people at that show, thank God. But all of them by the third time were looking at me like, "Are you okay? <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> what's going on, man?" <laughs> Are we watching somebody have a brain aneurysm? What? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it kind of felt like that. Oh my god, terrifying! Now in practice, you'll just start the songs and be like, "How does this go again?" Yeah, I do. I've got no bones about it anymore. I can't, you know, it's been. A... What's it going to be like when we get out of this lockdown and we start we start rehearsing again? It's been oh, time. Dude. Yeah, we'll have to have I mean, all the lyrics. You know what? I kind of, I kind of know why I do it though. I can't, I, it's because I'm always, because I write a lot, I'm always filling my head with new stuff. Yeah. So it's kind of like as soon as I've finished the song and I guess we made the album, it's kind of, you know, just, it's out and I'm on to the next thing. So my brain is just full of all these new songs and stuff. So I I, I do sometimes like lose track of songs because I'm always thinking about what I'm doing next. Then I'm like, oh shit, I've, I've got to. And you are one always in, working out. on a lot of shit because it's not just dinosaur stuff. Obviously, you've got like your um, side projects and then other people that you're writing st- songs for as well. So I'm not surprised. Yeah, I, I like. Yeah, I like to. Uh, I just like to write a lot. You know, just like to write a lot. One day, maybe the world will get to hear some of these side projects. I hope so. You know, I'm working up to it. I'm working up to it. Just getting Exciting. it all together. You know. Yeah. Um, I was thinking as well, like. I always find when you're playing live, I don't know about you guys, but as soon as I actually start to think about what I'm playing, that's when I'll fuck up or I'll start to panic about what's coming up next because I'm always on autopilot. By autopilot, Completely. Mike means six beers and two Blind whiskeys. Drunk. <laughs> that's what he means by autopilot, by the way. <laughs> he makes and it by sound thinking about, pro, I mean but... sober. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally what he means. <laughs> yeah, when I'm, you know, when I'm not on autopilot, when I'm thinking about it, brackets, sober, not intoxicated. <laughs> <laughs> We've always had these conversations where I'm like, honestly, I play so much better when I'm drunk. And then I turn around to you guys, but like, he thinks he plays better when he's drunk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, again, better brackets, louder. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Louder is better, isn't it? Is that what it means? Yeah. That's uh, that's how we work anyway. I don't know, man. I think you were just made, you were just made for big stages, bro. You were made for big stages. That's what I keep telling myself. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so the game basically, uh, the premise of the game, um, 
it's about all the bands that we have supported on tour and uh i just i've got a big long list here that i made um off the top of my head i didn't look any up so you might actually remember some that i've forgotten but uh sure. between so jim starts with a, a band that we've supported and then matt and then back between you until uh until you run out okay so it's a good memory okay. game okay so okay. uh yeah. jim do you want to kick things off so it doesn't have to be in any kind of chronological order. It's just no, 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 because that would think of a band. screw Matt up completely. So let's give him a chance. And it's okay. And it's butchers. And it's bands that <laughs> we've. It's bands that we've supported, not just played. Yeah. On so with. yeah, not at a festival. Um, that's a good point. I should caveat that. Not at a festival. Um, and it can have been just one show. And it's and it's not like, for instance, okay, and like bands that have supported us. That's not in the game either. It's only bands we've supported. Bands we've supported at their headline show. Okay. Okay. I'll okay. Let's start, yep. start with the biggie. Yeah. Weezer. Yeah, that was my first one. Yeah, is that top of the list? Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, coming in with another another biggie. Muse. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah, I'd forgotten um, about that one. Weirdly, because it was only three shows, right? Yeah. Muse. Yep. I think Muse was only two, wasn't it? We did three or three or four with Weezer, two with Muse. I think was we did it only two five with Muse. Weezer. Oh, you're right. We did two with Muse. I think we did. Did we do five with Weezer? Or maybe yeah, that. maybe. Don't know. There's our memory again. What was your favourite yep. out of the two? Ah, uh, I think maybe Muse. Really? Yeah, those shows. I were mean, dude, massive. They were wicked. Yeah, they were killer. They were massive. Dude, yeah, I've, I mean, I love both of them, obviously. I've got a couple of specific memories about that Weez, those Weezer shows. And it was both on the same day. And when we were playing Brixton, we were yeah. out by the van or something at the back, and we just loaded in. And obviously, everyone knows, like, Weezer are literally, you know, one of my favorite bands of all time. Top, top three, you know. And yeah. we were out the back... And I think we were just coming into the back of Brixton or something. And at that same moment, Brian um, walks in, the, the guitarist, second guitarist. Yeah. And uh, he walks in, he was picking out like a suit or something out of their like stage wardrobe. And he picks up this, picks out this suit. And I was like, that's a, that's a rad suit. And he's like, oh, thanks. And we walk in and he just happens to be walking in with us. And uh, I was like, so how's your, how's your day going and stuff? And he's like, yeah, I was, it was, it was cool. I was just on a date um, with what? this, with someone I've known for ages, but we've never been able to go on a date or something, something like that. And, uh, yeah. and I was like, oh, that's cool. And like, we talk, we were just talking about it as we were walking to the dressing rooms and stuff. And I sort of caught myself as a, as a moment. I was like, I'm talking to Brian from Weezer about his dating life, walking through Brixton academy i was like that's pretty sick that's wicked yeah yeah it was just like a nice moment and then the other one was uh i think it's after soundcheck or whatever oh i think yeah i think it was after soundcheck and um ollie texting us on the group chat so ollie our tour manager walks up to our dressing room to dinosaurs dressing room in brixton and he just bowled us in because it's our room oh yeah we're all down (laughs) we're all down on stage like packing up our stuff or whatever he bowls into our room and pat the drummer of weezer is just sat in our room and ollie boulders in and startles pat and pat you know he's startled and he's looking at ollie thinking like dude what are you doing and and ollie's there in the doorway looking at pat being like dude what are you doing and there's a (laughs) moment where pat thinks ollie's in his dressing room and Ollie knows Pat's in his dressing room. And they just stared at each other apparently for like 20 seconds. And then Pat was like, oh shit, I'm in your room. And like, Pat realized all of a sudden <laughs> and, uh, and bailed. But I thought that was such a funny little moment. I could just yeah. imagine Ollie looking back at the front of the door as well to check our names on it. Because obviously it's going to be one of the smaller rooms as well, being the support band. Pat's just sat was, there being yeah. like, I guess this is our room. Yeah, but yeah could, he I, didn't walk into that and go, yeah, this is Weezer's room. Yeah, no I rider think, in here. It must I be think us. it's because I think it's because they all had like a separate room or something. I think uh, they all had a room each or something. Anyway, all right. I always I find it funny when we're on those support shows of like big bands like Weezer and Muse. Uh, when you speak to the crew or whatever, and they're like, "So where's your bus?" I'm like, "Nah, 
Nah, uh, still, still don't have a bus. <laughs> still, still took the tube. Yeah. Like they assume the van is just like our shuttle or something, and we've got a bus somewhere. Yeah, I can remember, dude. I remember when we uh just on this last on the Offspring and Some Forty One tour. Um, yeah, when that guy, one of the guys on the crew, he was like, "So what are you guys traveling in?" And we were like, "Ah, oh, just the." Uh, just the the splitter outside he's like ah oh, cool early days early days that's cool We're like, yeah. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh you guys no, just no, started like... <laughs> <laughs> no we were uh <laughs> nah, first tour is it guys <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah he was like he thought it was like our third tour ever yeah Ew. well keep or, working hard guys one day i'll get that bus like yeah. what <laughs> 13 years bro <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's a long um, way to the top if you're in dinosaur pilot anyway <laughs> well speaking of buses then I'll, I'll go on messiest tour of all time death of anna yes what a tour yeah. <laughs> what a tour bus share though we got a little taste of that life. Just a complete piss up for Europe. Yeah, that was that tour was brutal, man. I think heavily the the heavily easily the heaviest tour we've ever done. Heavily the easiest tour. I think I I came back a changed man after that tour. Definitely, dude. Definitely full on alcoholic. Yeah, I remember w- one morning uh, waking up on the bus. Often, often I have like really bad uh, like insomnia, so it's just like sometimes do periods of touring i can't sleep for shit and it's really horrible but one morning after actually getting some sleep i think i came down in the bus and it was like 9 a.m and i came down to the the kitchen of the bus because it was like one of those double deckers and i went to get coffee and as i was making a coffee jamesy was stood next to me making a vodka orange i think (laughs) <laughs> <At> 9 a.m <laughs> i mean Nine. that literally sums up the entire tour 9 a.m i was like oh, dude wow i think uh we developed quite bad drinking habits after that like even in, in the states when we'd be getting uh to a festival or something and having to play at 12 we'd start drinking at eight and that was kind of like straight after the death of anna tour so we we me and Jim anyway, because you didn't have so much of a trouble problem with it, but me and Jim were like, okay, we need to set a rule now that on show days we don't start drinking until at least five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that that was was it the the Havana tour that kind of started our flip cup journey? Yeah, I think it was the US tour just after we got back off of that Havana tour. That's when and we beer started. Pong. Yeah, beer pong. Yeah. That amazing show. video of Jim celebrating. Beer pong, oh, I think yeah. in uh, in Austria. That, that's in Vienna, yeah. yeah with um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I won't say the name because we need to keep the game going. But uh, <laughs> yeah, with the massive, I look like I've got an afro. Yeah, like just, just jumping it up in slow mo, like, like absolutely stoked. <laughs> this yeah, shot just like so pong. stoked. You you couldn't you couldn't like if you wanted a video to describe someone stoked if like an alien landed it was like what is stoked you would play them that video <laughs> this is pure unbridled <laughs> happiness right here spilling out of his <laughs> so mouth happy. we need to uh, find yeah. that video somebody's got it somewhere i think i might have it yeah we'll, we can yeah. put it up yeah we'll it's show. amazing okay so we've got Def of Anna. matt um any band any band <laughs> <laughs> it's because i'm on the spot i, d- I said i said offspring and some 41 before but i guess you know that I've already used them. So, no, you uh, didn't. Sh- no, we've okay. had Weezer. Yeah, um, no, but in the st- in the story about the dude Muse. with the van. Anyway, all right, fuck uh, it. Yeah, yeah, I'll yeah, go yeah. with Offspring. Okay. Offspring, that's mine. There you go. Yeah, I was speaking to our tour manager Ollie about that the other day, and just about how it was the most brutal tour that yeah, we've done in term in terms of driving. Being in a van, mm. literally driving the length of Canada where every off day was like a full day of driving. Oh, dude. It was horrendous. I mean, the tour wasn't horrendous. It was amazing. But like the us driving it, because obviously the offspring offspring were flying in, in a in a private jet to, to the shows. And Dexter's, Dexter's own. Yeah, Dexter's own. He was, he was piloting like that's 
which makes them seem rad. like which makes them seem like douchebags, but they were fucking the, some of the nicest people we've ever met, right? Yeah, no, like yeah, don't, don't yeah, don't um don't let that be sort of misconstrued misconstrued. They're like the nicest dudes, the most supportive and lovely and just just super rad. But yeah, yeah. The, so Dex would be uh he like I had I had no idea he was a pilot, so that was that was pretty sick. So he would yeah. he was piloting them around, and then some forty one were following them, but on a bus. So they're driving overnight. So Offspring are playing the show, hanging out for a bit, and then they'll fly. And some forty one are playing the show. Then they're leaving at about two a.m. driving overnight. Us, <laughs> we're playing the show, staying for a bit getting maybe five hours sleep and then getting up at the crack of dawn and driving hours upon hours upon hours in our own little van. That was the saddest thing of the whole tour is that we really kind of bonded with both bands and we, we just really didn't get much of a chance to hang out many after many of the shows. No, just because of the sheer distances, you know? Yeah. Brutal, brutal tour and and then obviously the van fucking sliding into the ditch yeah <laughs> it was just to add to our was, woes that was you needing was a, a piss you felt so guilty that you made ollie turn <laughs> off into that tiny little town i mean i even said i even said look if this is going to potentially be risky because the roads looked pretty dicey i was like we can figure something out but i'm busting here and we literally just we we, we went in we span it around and then we just we must have stopped for four seconds if and that, the whole thing just went sideways. Dude, it was terrifying. It was literally terrifying. I thought we were going to yeah. roll with all the equipment uh, yeah, in the I, back. I, yeah, I thought we were going over for sure. It started moving when you guys were in the van. I didn't know that. Yeah. Shit. I thought it just oh, yeah, I thought dude, you'd all we like, were... got out because I wasn't there, oh, obviously. No, no, no. Jim was at, at home starting his family. I think I literally let out a really high pitched scream. <laughs> <laughs> and then was like, I'm cool, I'm cool, it's it. chill. <laughs> I just remember seeing you sort of like grab the side, you know, like the sort of steadying yourself in the on the side of the van. I was like, oh fuck. Yeah, because it was going in, it was going over at my side. It was the front right yeah. wheel going into the ditch. And I was like, oh yeah. fuck, I'm fucked. Yeah, I was like, please don't let me see Mike be crushed right now. Like I just can't I couldn't handle that. <laughs> 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 cannot deal with that anyway all right let's continue with this game let's continue so um yeah offspring so jim you're up okay um i will say oh shine down shine down yes. yeah lovely boys one of the longest tours yeah. we've ever done because it followed yeah. our headline tour followed that right oh well, that was a 10 weeker right yeah yeah yeah, we did six weeks with them and then four weeks of our own headline. Yeah. Damn, that was that was brutal too. That was such a wicked tour, like being out there with broken hands as well, um, who we already knew yep. before we went out. Um yeah, but flower. became much better friends with on the on the tour. Yeah, and then Bad Flower as well. Yeah. Um and we made a real connection with Joey, didn't we? Yeah, Joey's a dude, man. He's really lovely. I think it took a little while. Sometimes when you're on tour with other bands, it can take a little bit of a while to warm up to people. Um, and then I think Joey realized that we like drinking and he was like, oh shit, my guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, He'd be hanging around outside the door of our dressing room, like waiting for us to come out. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, th- yeah. <laughs> I think he realized that we just like, yeah, we have fun and we're like nice dudes. And that's always the worst. The, 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 it, it's like always such a shame where people don't connect or like, or they don't sort of cross the boundary and then like you do a month tour and then on the second to last day you end up hanging out and everyone's like oh shit like we really get on what the hell yeah then the tour's over that's why offspring did it right like literally on the first night of that tour we played the show and we were like well i guess we should bail then then we get a text from pete being like everybody's in our dressing room come down and, and hang out and meet everybody so we can just like start hanging on day one yeah and i was that like was that's so sweet that's the right way to do it you know it's so awesome and but it made it to that, made same, that tour to, circular to that same point that's almost exactly what shinedown did with us as well they really like 
were just so welcoming for a headline band to be playing like pavilions across the states for that long as well they could have been quite yeah. easily just sort of shut off and been like cool we're just doing this but they were totally opposite they they like really took us in like were there to speak to us and give us any like advice or anything if we wanted it um and we're just yeah. so fucking awesome great dudes it's just like it makes such a difference you know and it makes such a lasting impact when you meet people and they're just like just just great people you know yeah and like totally. they might be super famous or whatever super successful or whatever but they're just down to earth real people and it's like yeah that's what that's what this is about like i hate it when you meet people that just have weird egos and like all of that shit it's just like what the hell man like where i don't know what i think we've been quite lucky to not really meet too many of those no like yeah, with, with 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 the muse shows it was always got asked like what well, they're like we didn't see them we we literally saw them in passing because i think they arrived before they played and then left straight after yeah um with weezer i think we only spoke to the band and we saw rivers in the in the hall and just sort of said hello so we didn't really get to say anything to him yeah. um but I, I can't really think of anybody who's been i mean not that we would call anybody out really but no, totally. Like, but it's also like bands, I guess, like Weezer and, and Muse and stuff. Like, they weren't douchebags or anything. They just, I don't know. They've done it for such a long time. I guess it's a kind of different beast. Like, you know, they've been doing it over twenty years, like way over. Yeah, for you know? real. So it's, it's, it's just a, it's kind of becomes a different thing, you know. Then it's, it's different when you meet someone that's definitely not in Weezer and hasn't been doing <laughs> it 20 years <laughs> and they think they're, you know, it's just like, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. Anyway. Uh, so, Jim? Um, that was me. Oh, was it? It's Matt's turn, I think, now, yeah. Come on, what Matt. What did you go with, Jim? Oh, Shinedown, Dig yeah. deep. Yeah, it was Shinedown. I did shine. Um, boo, boo. Well, most, you know, a lot of the other US tours we've done was with Chevelle. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we've done two Another or three with those guys. Super, super nice bunch of dudes, and we made yeah, real good, good friends dudes. with um, the two other support bands they had on that tour too. Um, Black Map and Ages. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. We made we're super close with those guys, and I mean that's that's crazy because I think two of those tours were with Black Map, and then one of them was with Ages, right? Yeah. I think that yes. yeah and yeah. we've i mean they're you know they're like lifelong friends now those guys yeah they come to our shows when we go over and like jim you stayed at ben's um flat when you went to america yeah, when, with Rosie. Yeah, when yeah. stayed over with him Flanny, yeah. ben ben crashed him on my couch when he came to when black man oh, came shit, to, yeah. yeah that was funny man like that was a really good time actually um when Black Mike came through the UK last, yeah, Ben ended up just staying and he crashed at my flat for like... And you and Ben know, actually went and got matching days. tattoos. Oh shit, yeah, my Crucial Dawn tattoo. <laughs> ah, damn, yeah, that's a good story. So, can you remember what city we... Yeah, it was we in Fe- we were in Phoenix. Was it Phoenix? Yeah, because that's it where Brendan Phoenix. got his orange tattoo, right? Yeah, and it was... Yeah, uh, and was it Phoenix? Was that... Was because I remember Bill... McGaffey. Tempe. Uh, it was Tempe. I knew it started with a T, dude. Ah, Tempe. Oh, no, wait, am I yeah. imagining it? Am I imagining it that Bill turned up at that show? I'm pretty sure he turned up at that show. Well, when it was like mm. insanely hot. Insanely yeah. hot. And the, the green room was like way upstairs. Ben's girlfriend came. Like, can you remember... I think the the one I'm thinking of is where the you walk into the backstage and we were just on the right. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking as well. Because Jim How, did like try to do a workout, but it was literally I went 40 for a degrees. run. And I, yeah, yeah I it. made I made it like 30 <laughs> seconds and I had to sit under a tree for an hour with four <laughs> bottles of water. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'm thinking of the same place. Anyway, so me and me and Ben uh, Flanagan, who is the singer of Black Map. Um, we're talking about Wayne's World and what a great movie it is. And, you know, Ben's a funny dude. And we were like joking about Wayne's World and blah, blah, blah. And yeah. I was like, 
And I was like, oh, you know, Cassandra is amazing. Like, and her band actually kind of rules. And he was like, yeah, Crucial Taunt. And I was like, what? And he was like, no one knows. No one ever knows that the band, Cassandra's band. Yeah, dude, in that's Wayne's such World, a good quiz question. Yeah. Yeah, was called Crucial Taunt. That's the name of the band. And I was like, that is a rad, one, that's a rad fact. And two, Crucial Taunt is actually a killer band name. I don't know why I dig that so much, but it's rad. And he was like, yeah, that's cool. And, uh, and then we started joking about the fact that, like, you know, Crucial Taunt now is is no more, and I don't know why we found that so amusing. And I, we, I think we were, I don't know who came up with the idea, but we were like, fuck it, let's go and get a Crucial Taunt tattoo. So we literally just found the nearest tattoo studio to the to the venue and got an Uber there and both went and got a gravestone with Crucial Taunt on it with three roses uh on either uh, it's on my left leg and it's on ben's right they actually and, came out uh, super well yeah it's pretty good that, yeah they're rad like it was i I literally drew it in the in the waiting room of the of the tattoo studio i was like he was like how are we gonna do it? i was like i don't know something like this and then cj the, <laughs> the tattooist came out he's like what do you want we were like you know something like this and he was like well, why don't we just do that and we were like yeah all right fuck it <laughs> Can you invite him then, down to the show? Yeah, we got CJ down to the show. And then um, we did another tour, like the next tour on it. I mean, what? it might have even been with Chevelle again. And we were at the merch stand and CJ rocks up with his daughter. Oh, yeah. And he, I do remember and he just turned turned off and I was like, what? That's so rad. Like we, we you know, we messaged Nan again. Like he's a really nice dude. Anyway, yeah. So me and Ben Flanagan have... Wasn't somebody the there tattoo. at that merch stand oh, pretend, right. like saying that they were like Eddie Vedder's brother or something, or or somebody from Alice in Chains's brother? Dude, wasn't that in that bar when we started a tour? And Are you going to say Hulk Stone Cold Steve Austin? Stone Cold oh, Steve Austin. I thought was thinking of Stone Cold Steve. <laughs> yeah, his cousin. We met in that bar in that's Alabama somewhere. Of. That's what I'm yeah. thinking of, yeah. I think it was in Alabama. It's a good memory, Jim. And he and uh, he was like, "Yeah, um, he's going to start a music label or something. He might sign you guys." <laughs> oh, <I can't> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. rad. <laughs> yeah, sign us up. <clears throat> yeah, sign us up, man. Um, yeah. Anyway, I can't Wait. remember my the merch stand thing. No, I don't know. I can't remember. Half truths. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Jim. Uh, what another band? Yeah. Uh. Uh, nothing more. Yes. Yes. Nothing more. Wow. Was that, an, that was another that quite a long one. I think. I think so. That was. Did we miss the first couple of shows for that tour? I remember arriving remember. to the first show super late, and I don't think anybody thought we were going to make it. But Ollie, being Ollie, like fucking amazing tour manager, was like, "We are fucking getting there," and we arrived. I think just before we were supposed to go on and we unloaded set up didn't get a sound check but the other bands had hadn't counted for us for arriving so we had to like really just squeeze on stage yeah, yeah. 12 foot ninjas fifty nine thousand piece kit in the way yeah oh my god i remember <laughs> that dude i remember that i remember that show okay completely yeah, mr smalls first show. was it in it pittsburgh was that, yeah yes yes yeah. it was in pittsburgh yeah, I remember it. Oh my god, that oh. was yeah, that was a gnarly one. Yeah, oh, I wouldn't say it was dude. the best bit uh, we've ever done on a tour, but no, <laughs> no, possibly not. <laughs> no, still, still cool, still cool to uh, to do. I mean, they they were really nice as well. They're nice guys. Yeah. Common theme. We only tour with nice bands on the whole. <laughs> um, <laughs> so was that yours, Jim? That was me. Yeah, my my memory is kind of like it's kind of like an old Nokia. It can only save about fifty texts, and then you have to start deleting stuff. It, it's that's kind of where that's kind of where I'm at. But the texts are years, you know. So uh, I've still got okay. ele- I've still got twelve more bands on the list. You're joking? Okay, okay, okay. No. okay I'm gonna get this. I'm I can think of. I think I can think of one more. Do you want me to just tell bands, you one? No, no, wait, wait. Bands that we've supported, and it could be at any point in our career. Yeah. Cage There's the a elf. big one you're missing off. Ah, oh, that's a good one. That's a great one. What did, what did you Cage say? The Cage the elephant. Um, Cage the elephant, Jim. Cage. The Cage, Cage the elephant, elephant. The Jim. Cage elephant. Jim. Elephant. 
they're really good dudes too. My lasting memory of that tour is um, having uh, my friend Ryan from Norwich co- come along and do our sound, and us being in the dressing room in oh my Glasgow. god, Glasgow was it Glasgow? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Um, and Biffy <sighs> Clara had come down to see the band because they were yeah, friends. Well, yeah, not all of Biffy, two thirds of Biffy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The rhythm section. The, the, was it the Bros? The Bros. Yeah. And w- what happened? Oh, all God. I can remember is so, the end. <laughs> yeah. So we were we were in we were in Cage's dressing room, and we were with Matt and Brad, I think, and and the Biffy guys. Yeah. And we were just hanging. I mean, obviously, this is a long time ago, and. Uh, you know we were young and stuff and anyway we were just we were just hanging but i think ryan was a bit i think he was a bit pissed and you know not kind of not kind of handling that too well and there was a huge and there was a like around the lip of the um room at the bottom edge like there was a kind of lip so it was almost like the room was kind of sunk down below the door frame of the entrance of the room by about i don't know like half a foot or something and in the corner of the room there was yeah. a huge vat of ice ice cubes a massive massive, massive it, trolley of yeah was yeah. it beer? was it full of beers i i yeah. i don't remember any beers anyway for some reason ryan i, th- I think this is how it goes it's really vague in my head but i think ryan for some reason, just all of a sudden tried to get in the ice vat. I, I thought he which, tried to sit on the edge or something. Something like and that. It, and it was on and wheels. It was on wheels. And the whole thing tipped and then filled the that dressing room with that, you know, with the with the whole dressing ice room water. being sunk down in the yeah, with that lip that I was describing. The whole room was just there was nowhere for the ice to escape. So the room was just submerged <laughs> in water and ice by about half a foot. And we were just all suddenly, us, KJ Elephant and Biffy Clyro, all just stood in this thing. Just and looking at like, each other. Like, <laughs> dead silence, other. dead silence. <laughs> and I'm just looking at Ryan like, what are you doing, dude? <laughs> what are you doing? You not could now, not, dude. Have, yeah, right. You could not have <laughs> fucked a social meeting more than what you just did. <laughs> not only have we mugged off Cage the Elephant and Biffy, but it's Cage's room, dude. Yeah, like oh, it's just flooded. so many errors. So many. We went errors. from being anyway. the band that is like, yeah, come in and have a drink anytime, to like, don't ask those guys in again. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, that really reminds bad. me of. Uh, do you remember when we were in the dressing room in India, and uh, there was a cool box, and I saw it out the corner of my eye, and you can normally sit on cool boxes, like that's a good extra seat to have in the room. Yeah, and uh, I sat on it, and it was made of polystyrene. No, oh, I went you went straight, straight through, <laughs> straight, straight through it. <laughs> Covered all of our bags in ice water. Awesome. Oh man, that was super embarrassing. At least it was wasn't there. A couple of like dried off quickly. Really yeah, famous actually. actors and actresses in the room with us when it happened or something. Oh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, okay. Yeah. Cool. We could work with these people. Ah. Is that where, is that where <laughs> we've got some of the footage of uh, Peninsula from, where we're all drinking backstage and you're hitting Jim around the head with a loaf of French bread? Yes, I think that the is French it. Stick. Yeah, yeah. Is mm. it? good wow. times. <laughs> <laughs> Dance, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> Jay's filming. Um, yeah. Um, okay, um, so Matt. No, no, you just did Cage Elephant, so Jim. Um. Mm. Mm. So what? There's like eleven left. Yeah, there's a bunch. I've I've just uh, remembered a good one. I've just remembered a, a good one. Oh, um, Royal Blood. Yes, that's Berlin. on the list. It is. In yeah, even, I said even yeah. one. So yeah, we're playing. We had that show on this US tour that's been cancelled because of the well postponed or whatever because of the Corona thing with Bones and Royal yes. Blood. That would have been cool. Yeah. Yeah. That would have been a cool show. With Bones, who, who you both know quite well, right? Yeah, um, yeah we know Rosie. Rosie 
um, I knew through all the sort of tribes people and um, her and Johnny from tribes were really good friends. They probably still are really good friends. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. That would have been really good. That would have been a, like a kind of full circle thing. Like we know yeah. everyone on that show. That would have been wicked. I remember that Berlin yeah. show because it was kind of after they had just sort of taken off a bit and I was like, oh, sick. This will be. I think it was the week they had their number one. The first number one. Right. I mean, mm. they were on a really steep upward trajectory before then anyway, right? So I was yeah. like, oh, sick. It'll be pretty cool, like, room. And turned up, and it was the smallest stage I'd ever seen with maybe, I don't know. Did we even fit on the stage? How did we even get on there? Because I remember the I shape being left. I couldn't move on the stage. I was yeah. stuck, like, between a... I had to move, like, a cymbal stand to get to where I was going to play <laughs> and then put it back. <laughs> Because they're they're a two piece, obviously, but yeah, they, they play in a V shape, so it leaves just this small little triangle of stage left. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, was I remember we, I went from Stoke to Bummed very quickly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, okay, I've got another I'll one. Give you, oh yeah, you you had one, Matt. Gone. Motion. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. No, wait. Wait, 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 wait. That's not what you're just giving me one now. Yeah, I have. Uh, Coheed and Cambria. Yeah. Ah, yeah. Coheed. And that was cool. They were nice dudes. I've got two memories about this that tour specifically. One yeah. of them is this is actually this is actually dope. We were at Amsterdam Melkveg. We Great were in venue. our yeah, amazing venue. We were in our dressing room, and next door to our dressing room. Uh, the front man of Coheed was was hanging. And uh, they're all really lovely guys. And we were in our dressing room and we were playing the demo of Thrash Metal Cassette. Yes, I remember at that time we just, oh, yeah. Yeah, we just and Because at that time we just had the demo. And we were playing that and just like listening to it and kind of like, you know, thinking about it and stuff. And then what well, I forget I forget the uh, the front guy's name of Coheed. You remember his Claudio name? Claudio Sanchez. Claudio, that's it. Um so we're there listening to the demo of Thrash and being like, yeah, this is rad, like thinking about it. And then Claudio is kind of in the next door, but then he's kinda like hanging around out out in the corridor outside our room and stuff. And then like we listen to Thrash a couple of times and then Claudio comes in, pops his head in, he's like, hey. I'm I'm trying to shazam what you guys are listening to, but <laughs> it's not coming up. You're like, what is this? And if, what is this? And we were like, dope. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah. <laughs> like that's rad. We we're like, oh, this that's is just a demo. Of of, yeah, I was like, it's just a demo of one of the new songs. He was like, oh. And I was like, that's cool as hell. But <laughs> the other memory of those guys in that tour Oh, dude, it's not a good memory, and it's my fault. This <laughs> oh, is God. not a good memory. Come on, oh, God. I can't remember. So, oh, dude, I was such an idiot. So, the we ended that tour two nights at Coco. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two oh, nights. Oh, I know where you're going now. Oh, fuck you. yeah. <laughs> and the first night, for some reason, everybody came down. So we had a whole crew in the backstage. Like a real vibe. Like loads of our team were there. Loads of friends were there. Like a couple of other like people in the industry that we know. Like booking it, our booking agent, like Sean was down with his buds. Like a lot of people we know like came down to hang. And a couple of our buds came down. Like uh, for instance, Ronan from Basement came down just to just to chill. Yeah, and I love that guy. We love Basement to bits, and so it was great to great to see him. And you can take them off the list of the game as well, by the way. Now, so ah, that's, 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 that was my next one. Uh, well, we used to talk about it, it was good, that was cool tours. Um, anyway, so we play the show, it's great, and then I think everyone sort of you know hangs out, parties a bit, and eventually bails. However, me and Ronan and uh, one of Ronan's buds, I don't know what happened, but it just kind of got a bit out of control, and we just like fully just pied and. We were still at the backstage ages later and we'd kind of just torn through the whole rider. And I guess I was just, we were just hammered. And through doing that, I mean, it's, you know, 
it's rare that I do that anyway, but through doing that, we were just having a good time, got hammered, completely forgot that we had a show the next night in the same place with the same band. Like, well, that's what I was going to say. Fun. That's what I was going to say. In your defense, we never normally play two nights in the same city. So, and the fact yeah. that you were getting absolutely hammered, you, you're not likely to think about it. Yeah. So I was like, it's just rare. Yeah. Like you said, it's rare that we do that. So we were just so smashed. And we cleared out our dressing room, and Ronan was like, shit, like we've run out of, we've run out of booze. Like maybe, maybe there's some left in the, in the, in the other guy's dressing room. We were like, yeah, totally like everyone's left like we're the last ones here so it's totally fine and so we go up to those guys room there's loads of rider left and it's all kind of neatly placed it's it's all organized really nicely and <laughs> still still hadn't clicked by this point yeah and there's even like there's even like you know a little couple of sets of drumsticks and like some drum stuff and i was like this is so weird like they've left all this Low, like a full rider that's organized and like some drum stuff and i was like well like well mikey we can't afford many like much of our own shit so i'm definitely going to take a couple of these <laughs> sticks to give to mikey <laughs> like why wouldn't i so i'll just put these sticks in my bag and there's a whole <laughs> bunch of booze so like me and ronan were like great like let's just tear through this so we like took a bunch of that and anyway <clears throat> that was a pretty pretty long night and then the next morning, I woke up, I can't remember what time, and I had one of those realizations where you're struck with complete fear and regret. Because as guys. soon as I woke up, oh. oh, dude, it's like, it is the worst. As soon as I woke up, everything for some reason, it's not even like I was thinking about it, but everything just hit me all at once. And like clicked into place that we were playing at the same no. venue that day, and that me and Ronan had torn through the headliner's rider that they rider. left for. Fucking hell, man! Talk day. about faux pas. And and even taking the drumsticks. That's that is my. <laughs> well, that's one of my biggest regrets of my entire career. Like <laughs> the icing doing on the that. Cake. I'm not. I'm not kidding. That's that's honestly one of my biggest regrets of my whole career oh. is is fucking that up and taking those drumsticks. Obviously, if I knew that we were going back there, I would never would have done that ever. It just in my brain, I thought we'd bailed. Yeah. So I immediately called Ollie, panicked, and I rang him. And he picked up. He's like, "Dude, what's up?" And I was like, "Dude, I have done something so bad." And like explain it to him, and he was like, "Fuck yeah, that's that's bad." And he was like, "Okay, well, like when you get back here, try and try and stick the drumsticks uh, by his kit or something, so he doesn't realize." And when I got there, uh, there was just guys everywhere, so I couldn't, so I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't make my crime right. And at one point, <laughs> at one point, I heard. I think it was the drummer and he was really pissed, like as in annoyed. He was like, yeah, like I swear I left, like we left loads of booze and stuff. And I think he was just, you know, they were just like, shit, someone's just obviously taking it. And it was acted, it was completely accidental, but it was me. Did we oh, replace dude, the booze? I don't remember. I can't remember. Is that the remember. first time it's been sort of um, brought to the light of day, this incident? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Which yeah, we, we, I mean, we must have replaced it. I I, I, oh, maybe Ollie did. Yeah, yeah, I think Ollie did. Just those. It was just those two <laughs> damn drumsticks, man. I'm going to take them to my grave. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh anyway. I mean, in the grand scheme of Tory stories, that's not even that bad, really, is it? No, dude. It's just, it's just like you know what we're like. It's just not. We like. Yeah, we're a bit more polite. It's than just. That. It's just not our style at all. Like we're a, a really respectful bunch of people. So me. Doing that, I was I was pretty disappointed. Anyway, Good one. they were they were they were super nice dudes. Also, I'm a massive massive fan of the drummer's side project, Weird Science. Yeah, yeah, um, it's amazing. That's so killer. It's um, uh, amazing. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, we've slammed that many times in the van. Jim, who's up? Jim, Jim, Jim. Uh, well, should we talk about basement then? Yeah. 
<clears throat> that was just a UK run, right? It was. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was just one of those yeah. times when you're out with a band and you're like, you instantly click and you're like, shit, this is going to be a fucking rad tour. Amazing bunch, great, of, was, bunch of guys. Yeah. Really, really cool. And the shows were fucking killer. I remember particularly in Cardiff. Do you remember that show? It just fucking yeah, went off. Yeah, I do off. remember that one. That was, that was amazing. Yeah. Um, oh, the Globe. Yeah, because like when you're when you're support, it was the Globe. Yeah, when you're support, you very rarely get like a crowd that's going to go off like you're the headliner. Yeah, yeah. And I remember thinking when we went on, the like it was the buzz in the room was was rad. And then when we started yeah. playing, it was only like half a song in before people started losing their shit. It was so it was so amazing. Yeah, we need to go yeah. back. basement crowd. We haven't been back for a while. No, we haven't. And they're just, you know, it was cool to just make a connection like that. Like, yeah, miss those dudes. I, my last memory from that tour is uh, who has the Contessa? Or uh, <laughs> I'm duking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can't dude. duke because I've got the duke. Yeah. <laughs> so Basement were, were deep in, at that point, a card game called, what were they playing? Was it Coup at that time? Coup, or was Coup it? yeah. Coup. Yeah, Coup. Yeah. And uh, they introduced us to that which was so influential because then the next, like we went off and did a bunch of Europe tours with like another band that I could name, but it will ruin the game, I guess. But anyway, that basement teaching us how to play that car game. That was basically our sort of staple pastime on, on tours for the next like two years or maybe. Yeah, Cause it was longer. a great way to like, uh, sort of get, re- get your mind ready and also drink good one to like just get yourself a bit loose for the show yeah and also just like bond with whatever band if you could if you could kind of get them down with it like everyone was yeah. stoked it was killer i've just i've just thought of a couple more bands through telling that story yes I'm crushing we don't it. have to tell Crush stories it. for uh, each of these because we're getting towards the end now so if we if you want to just rattle through a couple okay i've got a couple Go. frank car and the rattlesnakes i've got one yes ah uh, yeah well, that leads me to Royal Republic. Yes. Yeah, Royal Republic. That was my other one. Uh, yeah. I've got one more. Go. This is my first... Who, who we went on tour with the week I joined Dinosaur Pilot. Yeah. Oh, my God. New Model Army. Yeah. Yeah. That was the straight... Um, that was the strangest tour I think I've ever done in my life. <laughs> yeah, it, was, no, I mean, <laughs> it was really strange. <laughs> I mean, yeah. poor Jim coming from tribes <laughs> Going to support New Model <laughs> Army on a tour. Yeah, yeah. We, the first show was at the Forum and I was so stoked. Like, oh, yeah, wicked, big stage, you know, get to like, you know, see what it's like, get there, a couple of crusties on the front row, that's about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, playing to six We're on five minutes after wizard, doors. Just like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, dude, oh. brutal. So how, how many have we got left, Mike? Uh, okay, do you want me to give you some, or are you still How going? many? Let me try and think. Uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five left. <sighs> okay, right. Mike, Hit me with some. Give yep. it, wait, wait, give us some, give us some hints. Which territories are we talking about? UK, uh, let's go, Europe. let's go first US tour. Okay, you miss MC Rutt. Yes. Oh, shit. My first one was MC Rutt. Yes. Your yeah. Oh yeah. MC Rut. Of course. Your first one was MC Rut. Yeah. You meet six is our our first one. Then MC Rut. Yeah. Nice. Oh, that was, so that was you meet six. Tour. I mean, we were we were babies when we did that, man. Yeah, dude. We. we I think our kids. first our first show of that whole tour was in LA, right? And we slept outside the venue in the RV. Yeah, we did. Oh my god, was that the first show? Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was the first show because we missed the first couple. I think because of um. The old bass visa player, troubles. yeah, James Saha's visa. Oh, that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. We slept outside the venue. I remember, like, waking up, like, needed. Like, obviously, there's no toilet on the on the RV, so like, literally waking up, going outside, taking a leak on a tree on the yes. street of like literally. out in LA. Just like, what? <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> I remember, like, because yeah. we were quite hungover as well. It was the first show, so obviously you have a few drinks to celebrate afterwards. I remember peeling myself off the fucking bed in the back with, like, the driest mouth. It was so hot <laughs> and humid in that fucking RV because it was in LA as well. Um, yeah. Being really disoriented, leaving the RV and being like, fuck, I need to find a Starbucks just to go for a piss and have a coffee and wash my hands. 
<laughs> yeah, dude. That was fun. Yeah. Alright, I've got another but, one. I mean, oh yeah, go on, go on, go on. <laughs> Go on, if you've got a story. Well, I was just going to say, wasn't it funny? Because that was before we, that wasn't our RV. Like, obviously, when we bought the RV years and years later. But that was the first tour we just rented that guy. And yeah. it was one of those Cruise Americas that had the dog in the window. <laughs> you the dog <laughs> yeah. in the window. It's always looked like the oh, dog in the window. Yeah, and like when we'd roll up to venues, like Yumi would be rolling up in the bus. Tonight Alive with the other band on that bill, rolling up in a bus. And then we'd roll up in the, like this holiday RV and the crew and stuff at the venues would be like, oh, okay, like, who are you guys? And we'd be like, oh, we're one of the bands. They're like, what? <laughs> Rolling up in the holiday <laughs> RV. Uh, don't kid with us. Where in are you the, going? In the Cruise America RV. Like, <laughs> shut up, dude. Where the looking fuck at, are you Looking going? at us like, you ain't done this before, have you? <laughs> yeah dude. amazing um yeah, okay good. go jim go 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 motion city soundtrack yes yeah that was with the excerpts too right yeah it was yeah that was a killer tour i love those boys good dudes good dudes two more i've got okay. three more oh shit mike hit so me another Europe us or... another us one oh, US. Okay. Yeah. you play guitar with them on stage brand, brand new. new yes wow dude Blast in the past. Yeah, of course. And Jesse used to yeah. come on at the end of our set and play Nature Nature with us. I don't even know how that I started remember, to happen. Did he ask? I literally can't remember. He just, he just really liked it. Yeah, he was always side stage, wasn't he, when, that, when we played yes. that song? I yeah. remember yeah. when I went on on stage, got thrown on on stage to play their last song. This was fucking funny. So it's not like me to go on stage with someone else anyway, because one, I don't know, I'm... I'm I don't know it's their moment so i'm just like you know and also it makes me nervous like extra performing or whatever makes me nervous or like not even knowing someone else's songs and yeah. i was side of stage watching the end of the set and kinetti their guitar tech brandy's guitar tech was like dude take this get on stage play the last song and i was like no dude he was like dude do it and I was like, well, I, I don't even know it. I don't know how to play it. <laughs> he was like, it's easy. It's just these chords. He showed me the chords. Threw and this then literally guitar like, pushed on you on stage, right? And then she pushed me on, pushed me on stage, right? <laughs> and they were all stoked. Like they were like really stoked to have me. I was like, like really pumped. I go to drop into the chorus. Boom. Kinetti has accidentally put me on stage one song early. So he's taught me <laughs> the wrong song. So I'm on stage in front of however many thousand people holding Jesse's guitar to a song I literally have no idea how to play. Like, You're like no frantically idea. looking over at the chords. like. So I was, yeah, literally doing that. Frantically looking over at the chords to see what everyone else was playing to try and work it out in real time on stage. I was like, this <laughs> is a cluster fuck like a nightmare anyway i kind of get it i kind of get it and i think at that point someone runs up to my amp and the amp i'm going through and cranks it yeah. so it's like <laughs> pumping that amp then explodes so that then that amp then explodes so jesse See, here's that so my amp's gone so nothing's coming out from what i'm playing so he then throws his guitar that he's playing on me so i now have two guitars around my neck and i can't remember i think he just started breaking something but i was just I, so i have two guitars around me and i'm playing what i don't know what the fuck i'm playing anyway, <laughs> i think then a, the rest <laughs> of the band start walking off so then it's I just you me, left on stage no it, yeah i think everyone like we because we went into the last song and we played that whole thing and then people just started doing whatever the fuck they wanted so i think jesse was breaking his mic stand and stuff and it ended up just me garrett and brian just fucking jamming on a riff i remember yeah. that we just me garrett and brian just ended up slamming on a riff for about five minutes and i was like that's <laughs> actually pretty that's pretty that's pretty sick like yeah that was we bad. were just fucking playing this playing this riff for ages to like the crowd and then 
just sort of called it. It was cool. That was fucking wicked. Anyway, yeah, that was a good yeah. run. Um, I'll bring the I'll bring this uh, episode to a close now because it's been. I know one of them. Long. Royal Republic. On, Royal Republic. Um, Haven't you already done that? Got, I thought you'd already done that. No. So we've got Twin Atlantic and Lower than Atlantis. Just just ah, for the old bank there. Wow, old school man. Yeah, old school. I think they were both pre-gym, right? Yeah, yeah, I wasn't on either of those, yeah. so they don't count, whatever. Yeah, yeah. fair enough. Yeah. Matt, you should know better. <laughs> right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. Uh, <laughs> um, that was fun. Yeah. Let's do it again. All right, more in a couple of days. Love you. See you later. Bye. Bye.